Hi everybody, Big Guy here. Welcome to Mike's Garage. They've been working on the project here for a couple weeks. Um, that we did a deck. Now what we have is we have a house uh, the owners bought uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And uh, the house is about 12 years old. Uh, and he wants to replace the decking. So we got into talking about it and the... Um, the five quarter decking, the wooden decking that's down there, we have to take all that up. Uh, the railing is made from eight by eight posts and it has the, uh, the round aluminum tubes for the railing. So um, him and the wife, they want all that out because the deck, when, when they built the deck, don't get me wrong, the deck was built very strong. The uh, boards were very close together. There was no gap in the five quarter boards that were there, which is wrong. There, there's no ventilation for what's underneath, okay? That can cause rot. So we had to pull all that up. She didn't want the eight by eight posts because it did look like a dock where you could tie up a cruise ship, okay? Because the posts were huge posts. She wanted the smaller post with the Trek decking and the Trek railing, which is pretty interesting how we did all that, but we'll get into that. So uh, first, we had a problem tearing it up. Uh, the guys that built the deck did over-the-top job. All the uh, screws, which was all screwed down, were countersunk. And then on top of the screws, they put wood putty, that plastic wood, to, so you could hide the screws. So it must have looked good the first few years, but after the sun got to it, because the deck was in the straight sun all afternoon, the board started to get warped, uh, started to splinter a little bit. Uh, you couldn't find the screws to unscrew them to take the old boards up. We wound up having to get a circular saw and cutting down in between the, the joists and pulling them up, getting a hammer and a chisel and a crowbar splitting the boards apart so we could get them off, break the screws off, drive the rest of the screw into the uh, joists. It was a mess. I mean, it was two or three bags of those bagsters that they had to throw out. Uh, it took us all day and the next half a day Sunday to get the deck up, get the railings off, and get the 8x8 eight eight posts off. The 8x8 eight eight posts were, they had 12-inch uh, lag bolts, through the post um, then they had about a dozen screws in each post I'm telling you it was really well built really strong but it was a pain in the neck to get it apart to start the project okay so we're using the Trek decking uh, we replaced all the posts with four by four posts uh, we cut the, the the regular posts were 36 inches the corners we cut at 39 and um, it's, it's really tricky. I was taught a long time ago when you're going to redo something and you're not going to rebuild the whole thing, um, you don't really need to bring a level or a square to the project because nothing's going to be level, nothing's going to be square. Uh, the deck was about an inch and a half lower off of the house than it was at the house. So right away we had a problem with the deck was going to have to go downhill. We're running the boards laterally, uh, and uh, the further away you got from the house, the lower it was. So that was going to be a challenge to get the railing to look straight. It wasn't going to be straight. It had to look straight. And that was one of the things that I was told as a young carpenter. It has to look straight. If you put the level on it and it looks crooked, which it will, you have to change it. You have to make it look straight. So every once in a while, you have to stand back, walk to the other end of the yard, see if it looks straight. So if you're trying to do a redo a deck and it's an old deck and all you want to do is strip the top off of it and put new decking on, don't, don't worry about it being level or square. It has to look good when it's done. That's the key. So we got all the um, old boards up. We went and got the tape, taped the top of all the rafters, uh, got everything prepped, cut the uh, four by four posts, got all those mounted, started on the decking. A truck decking, you're supposed to leave a gap at each end. It was uh, it's about 22, 24 feet. 
end to end. So the biggest you could get the boards were 16. So there had to be a joint on either side just to switch back and forth, take turns as we did the decking. So two of the joists, we had to put sister joint, joists in. Now we did that, had to do that really because where the other joists, where the other joints were, they did double screw, triple screw to hold them down. Uh, we couldn't find the screws to take them out, so we had to rip it up. So the top of one of the joists was just shredded. And there was some evidence after, 10, after 12 years, I think it was only 12 years old, it started to show some rot. And you can see that we put the sister joint in. We're using the Trek tape to tape the top of the uh, joists to help them stay, uh, stay dry and not absorb all the water. So we started out at the, at the base away from the house. We uh, got everything lined up, struck a, didn't strike a line, but we did a measurement and marked as we went down the joist to make sure we were the right distance from e each end. And we started on the joist. You have to cut each one. It's not square. They, they, do, they warn you about that. They tell you about that when you start. It's true. Each one is off eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, and you have to make it true or they're not going to line up. You do have to square the end of the joist so the end of the decking so it'll match. And you have to make sure, sure that it's that there's a sister joint there because the, the joint has to have four of the hold down screws and you have to leave space for expansion and contraction. And we had to do that because this, uh, this particular deck is going to be in the hot sun all afternoon. So it's going to expand and contract, no doubt about it. So we got the decking started, moved up towards the house, um, finally got that done. We do have to rip one uh, about two and a half inches, so we would cut it in half. That's the half that went against the house. And we kind of bridged it, slid it under the house with the uh, hold down screws in it and, and flattened it out and then screwed everything down to hold it in place. Uh, the railings, interesting. You really have to see what works for you with the railings. Now we used a four by four block under the bottom of the railing because the measurements were a little bit off at the bottom compared to the top of the posts, the four by four posts. We put the sleeve over them, we measured it. And what we did is we put the base down up against the post. We marked it with the pencil on each side, to make sure that the spindle was going to be equal away from each post and that we were going to have enough room to put the clamp on the mounting bracket because we did that measured that cut it we marked it we didn't measure it we actually took the piece over stuck it on the ground and measured it that way marked it cut it then we went to see how much wider how much longer we had to make the top piece in some cases it was as much as a quarter inch off the top to the bottom so what we did, you got the bottom, you put it up on four by four by four blocks, four inches off the deck. Uh, put, the, put the support in the middle to hold it off the floor to give it the support. And then you mount the bottom bracket. Make sure it's the right distance from the outside and the inside to put it in the middle of the four by four post. Then you put the spindles in and then we put the top one. Now the top railing has to meet the top of the four by four posts. So what you would do is you would just stretch it up quarter inch one way or the other to make it flush because we're gonna put a railing on it, a cocktail railing down the length of it. So it was important to get that flush across the top. So when you looked underneath, you didn't see a gap all along the, the top rail and the, and the railing itself. So we did it that way, it turned out really good. Uh, step back, make sure it looks straight. I have to say, not, not too much of it is level, but it looks level. And that's, that's what you have to do. So everybody is different. I know a lot of the videos that you see out there, uh, they started from scratch with a nice base. Uh, they framed it straight and level, and then they struck it with chalk lines. And you can do that if you're starting from scratch and everything's brand new. If you're just trying to redeck an existing deck and you're just going to have the joist left, 
you do have to fudge things a little bit. Just want to give you that word of caution there. Just make sure it looks straight, step back, look at it, get it as straight and as level and as square as you can. And um, it'll turn out to be a nice project. You can see the video here it did turn out to be pretty nice. Uh, I'm very happy with it. The owners are really happy with it. Um, I was there as a consultant, help, you know, help with the work, help them tell them what to do. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's how it's going to work. And um, we got it done in three weekends and a couple of nights after work, five o'clock when he got home from work. We worked to about from five to about seven or eight o'clock a couple of nights to finish up a few odds and ends. But you can see it turned out really nice. I'm very happy with it. Hopefully that was a helpful tip. Uh, give me some comments. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, like I said, it was Trek decking with the Trek custom railing with the cocktail uh, top on top of the railing. Uh, we did use the uh, color screws to go down through the top of the cocktail railing to hold that on. Even put a bead of glue up there to hold it down. And it uh, turned out really nice. It's really nice and solid. It's uh, beautiful work at the end. Uh, so I hope that's interesting. Take a look at it. See what you think. Give me a comment. Please subscribe. And thanks for watching Mike's Garage. One out. Seven throw. Go, 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 go.